Shakur Stevenson views Edwin De Los Santos as a tougher fight than a potential fight with Frank Martin that was heavily rumored at a point in time earlier this year. That's what I want to talk about in this video. What up, fight world? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Subscribe to the channel. It's free. Now, Shakur Stevenson, he did a media scrum and he had this to say, quote, I think it's a harder challenge than the Frank Martin fight. Once again, I've been watching him, so I kind of see like he got great movement. He got great punching power. I watched his fight with El Rayo Valenzuela. He kind of kept catching him in the exchanges and he's real good at exchanging with fighters. So we'll see come fight night how he presents himself. Shakur was asked about Edwin De Los Santos having power. Like, do you see him as a power puncher? And he says, do I see him as a big puncher? Yeah, I see him as a bigger puncher than Frank Martin from the outside looking in. And even Bob Arum chimed in and gave the P's and props to Edwin De Los Santo. He's, he's a good fighter. He's gonna give Shakur a good fight. But if you want my honest opinion, there ain't nobody out there that's gonna be Shakur. He says, I think maybe it's a tougher fight. We went after Frank Martin because he was above anybody else in the WBC rankings. Then we just went down the list. Then we got to Martin and promoter Tom Brown accepted the fight in good faith. And then Martin pulled out. Why he did that, I don't know. Now, let me just address that little part. Everyone, not everyone, but some people are saying that Frank Martin ducked and all that. I don't believe I don't believe that this like when I look at the situation, I hear the different sides. Frank Martin did an interview and he came very clean. He said, basically, he said everything was agreed on his side verbally in good faith, which is what Bob Arum is saying. However, he said when they started, when they got the actual contract and looked at the numbers, the numbers didn't jive that. I mean, how is that a duck if you look at the numbers and the numbers don't meet what your expectations are for the fight and then it's just deaded and you move on to the next opponent that's not really a duck see some people forgot negotiation is a art it's a it's a lost art form to negotiate that means like ping pong that there is back and forth you don't just send an offer and then the person don't like the number and you say oh well to hell with this guy and then you move on that's that's not negotiations. And even if you do choose to do that, then how is that a duck if you don't even pursue it? Now, I get it. If you're back and forth, laboring back and forth, sending contracts, wasting your time, and then it's apparent that the person don't want to fight and they have these ungodly requests where they're asking for, you know, the sun, the moon and the stars, then, OK, that's something completely different. But to send somebody a contract, you didn't discuss the numbers previously, and then they're not okay with the numbers, and you just dead it and then say, oh, we fighting Edwin De Los Santos. That's not really a duck. You guys can say whatever you want in the comment section. I said what I said, and it's not going to change. And boxing fans have a real bad habit of doing this. It's, it's easy to comment on social media. It is easy to comment on the internet, where... You can look at somebody else's life. You can look at someone else's livelihood and just state your opinion on what they should be making and what is worth it. These fighters are risking their lives to fight most jobs. And now I'm not saying there's no dangerous. Obviously, there's crab fishermen and different police firefighters. There are certain jobs where when you sign up for it, you're risking your life to be a firefighter to pull someone out of a burning, scorching, four alarm fire building, you know what I mean? You, you're risking your life, I get it. But boxing is one where it's every single time, like a police officer, you're not risking your life. I mean, I guess technically you are, but on a routine traffic stop, hopefully you're not risking your life if it's an upstanding citizen. You see what I'm saying? Like there are some tickets where it's just a standard ticket and you just give someone a ticket and they're on their way. They don't pull out no heat and try to spray you or something because they're fugitives or outlaws or something but when you're a boxer every single fight you you have somebody's trying to take your health bar down that's the reality of boxing so it's not there is no 
no actual fight where the person is not trying to hurt you. Like this is the hurt business. Like literally you have someone trying to hurt you every single fight you have. So people got to be cognizant and respectful of that. And it's easy to say on the internet how much somebody is worth and all that type of stuff. But just think of it if it was yourself. If you wanted to get a job at Costco and you agreed to the position, oh, I can lift 40 pounds or 50 pounds. I could drive a forklift. I could work those hours. And then when they tell you how much you're going to make and it's boo-boo and I ain't talking Demetrius Andre, but they say, oh, we're going to give you $10 an hour. You're like, wait, 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 pump your brakes. I was down for the job. I can, you know, be an asset to this company. I can operate heavy machinery and I can stock stuff and be on time, but not for $10. That's the same thing that happens in boxing. So what's the difference? Frank Martin didn't like the money for whatever reason, and they moved on. As far as what Shakur and Bob Arum are basically saying, I do think Edwin De Los Santos is a great fighter, but Shakur is saying it's a tougher fight than Frank Martin. I don't know because he didn't fight. Like to my knowledge, he's never sparred Edwin De Los Santos and he never sparred Frank Martin and he never fought him as pros. So how can you discern what the tougher fight is for your particular style when you've never been in there with them? You know what I mean? Like you have literally no up close and personal experience to determine what fighter is is harder or what style is harder for you you get what i'm saying because i me personally i think they're both good fights and they present different challenges that's like saying devin haney saying tio fimo and regis progre is you know one is a harder fight than another and that's not even a great example because at least devin haney has sparred tio fimo so he knows what to expect there but if it's like Subrio Matias or somebody and Regis Progre and he's never fought either guy, I mean, you don't really know what fight is, is harder. And I love when fighters keep it real and say that when at the media day, the fight week, people, the reporters will ask him like, hey, what about so-and-so who hits harder? And he's like, I ain't even fought the guy. How can I tell you who hits harder when I ain't been in the ring with him yet? You know what I mean? So, you know, no, no real big issue, but for Shakur to say one guy is tougher I mean, that's just circumstantial evidence based on their past fights. And it's real, really conjecture and speculation. You don't really know until you get up in there with them. Let me know how I did. I am looking forward to the fight. Weird that the fight is happening on Thursday, but whatever. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel. It's free. I'm the best in the business and it's not even close. You dig and I'm introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.